Psalms. You'll need to go from there, going toward the book of Genesis. You've got 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings. And I'd like you to go to 2nd Kings, chapter 7. And we'll just read two verses here to introduce a subject that I want to preach on. And I'm going to bring together a bunch of scriptures about uh, the afterlife, about what happens after death. I got four points. First point is heaven. Second point is purgatory. Third point is limbo. Fourth point is hell. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You're a Baptist church. We don't believe in the two of them. If you're in a liberal church, you wouldn't believe in any of them. <laughs> but I want to talk to you about heaven and hell. Second Kings chapter 7. The older I get, the more I realize that I'm only here for a time. Right. And I don't have much time to influence people. And you don't have much time to make up your mind where you're going. That's right. I trusted Christ as my Savior 54 years ago. Got no regrets about it whatsoever. None. The older I get, the more I trust in the Lord. The more I find that God is altogether just, holy, loving, and kind. Amen. The less I trust people, right. including the one in this pulpit. Right. The less I trust mankind, but I do trust the Lord. Yep. And He's good. Amen. And He's able to do things in the lives of individuals mm -hmm. to make even people like you good to be around. Amen. That's right. Amen. He's able to save you and save you not only take you to heaven, but He's able to save you and, and clean you up. That's right. Amen. Do you know if you don't know the Lord... If you're not careful, you are destructive not only to yourself, but everybody around you. That's right. If you don't know the Lord. Yeah. And it, you don't want to be, but it's just because you don't have good direction from heaven. That's right. 2 Kings, if you have it, chapter 7. Y'all ignore the man behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> and he went past the, the meal? Yeah. All right. 2 Kings, chapter 7. I want you to look at the first two verses. 2 Kings 7, 1. Would you stand with me, please, in reverence for the reading of the Scripture? We'll read these two verses and pray and be seated. <coughs> Standing to read 2 Kings 7, 1. You follow along silently while, while I read aloud. Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. Add two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Now, that prophecy did come to pass. And we're not going to major on that, but it did come to pass. But somebody who doubted it expressed his doubt in verse 2. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? <laughs> And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. Mm -hmm. That verse will be our text. And I want to emphasize uh, the expression, windows of heaven. Let's look at verse 2 one more time. Then a Lord, on whose hand the king leaned, answered the man of God, and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes but shall not eat thereof. Would you bow with me for prayer? Father, thank you for answered prayer. Thank you for good weather. Thank you for people who made it safely to church this morning. Thank you for visitors who've come. And I take it, dear Lord, not only as them being kind to me on my seventh anniversary here at the church, but I take it as a gift from you. And I thank you for moving in their hearts to stir them up to come and be with us today. <laughs> Father, all is vain unless you move in our hearts. All of our effort and activity and preparation of food and all that is nothing more than what the world can offer in social activity unless you do something in someone's heart today and help them. And I know you can do that. And so I pray with confidence, but pray because you told us to pray that you would save that soul that is nearest hell right now, that one that doesn't realize it, 
but this may be their last church service they ever attend. This may be their last year they ever experience on earth. I pray that you'd bless and help saving souls, stirring saints in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Would you be seated, please? <laughs> if you're saved, you're saved by grace through faith. Amen. Someone was telling me at the close of Sunday school that even though that they'd always believed in God, they'd always kind of felt like that maybe what might help them to get to heaven was in doing good. And they said they understood in Sunday school that that's not what saves you. That you're saved by grace through faith. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, Amen. not of works, lest any man should boast. Amen. Now, if you're saved by grace through faith, the Bible defines faith as the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so, when a person talks about faith, he's talking about something not seen. If you can see it, it's not real faith. Right. Anybody remember in the old days, someone would say, if they were a doubter, they'd say, I'm from Missouri. <coughs> show me. Show me. Yeah. They were declared the show me state. But the Bible says if we're saved without seeing Jesus, we will see him one day. Yeah. And the Bible says in 1 Peter 1.8, Whom having not seen, you love. In whom though now you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable Amen. and full of glory. <coughs> you uh, children perhaps have uh, sung about, oh how I love Jesus. Yeah. Well, how can you love somebody you've never seen? Yeah. According to 1 Peter 1 8, we can. Amen. We can love Him even if we've not seen Him. Sure. I've not seen heaven. Windows in heaven. I've not seen heaven, but I believe in it. Amen. We Christian people have not seen heaven, but we believe in it. Amen. And there are people, and especially unsaved people, who in the mystical world, you know, claim to have seen this and that about the uh, afterlife, and you folks know about the light down at the end of the tunnel, all that. And of course, you, you cynics think that that's an oncoming train down at the end of the tunnel, amen. But our knowledge of heaven may be somewhat limited today, but one day we saved people are going to know it perfectly. Amen. And see the details. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 13, 12, For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. You know what that indicates, folks? It means that saved people are going to know one another in heaven. Amen. We're not only going to know the Lord, know where we're at, but we're going to know one another. The Bible says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him, Amen. for we shall see Him Amen. as He is. That's 1 John 3, 2. I've never seen Jesus, neither has your grandmother. Right. Okay? In spite of what she may have told you, that she had a vision sometime. Yeah. But I'm going to see Him Amen. someday, and all saved people will. Amen. One of the favorite little tunes that John R. Rice put to music that I really like, we've sung a few times on Sunday night, is the windows of heaven are open. Amen. Now, that song refers to blessings coming down from heaven. But don't you sometimes wish that the Lord would open the windows of heaven and maybe you could see, you know, who's up there? Amen. I've got a mom and dad on the other side Amen. according to their testimony and according to the testimony of the Word of God. My wife's got a mom and daddy up there. We've got other loved ones. We've got members of this uh, church who, just since I've pastored here, are over on the other side. Right. And I look forward to being able to see them in heaven. Amen. It'd be nice. I don't know what I don't know everything that's going on in heaven, and I don't know what they are able uh, to see about what's going on down here. Maybe. The Lord opens the windows of heaven just a little bit. The reason why I say that is because in the book of Job, Satan uh, came and appeared before the Lord with the angels of God. Yeah. And God had a conversation with the devil. And he said, have you ever considered my servant Job? Yeah. And it's almost like that the Lord 
opened up the windows of heaven and said, Hey, devil, look at this. Yeah. Look at this guy. Amen. He's still living right. Yeah. In spite of the world going to hell, he's still living right. So maybe the Lord does allow them. If so, I want to say I love you, Mama. <laughs> Isn't that what the football players do when they think that the camera's turned on them? If, if that's a window there, hello, Dad. Looking forward to seeing you. I love you. The man asked, if the Lord would make wonders of heaven, might these things be? I want to get a glimpse by looking through the glass, the looking glass of the Word of God. I want us to get a glimpse of what we can see through a glass, even if it's darkly uh, today, about the eternal state. Amen. I'm glad. I'm not going to be. I'm not going to be bringing up experiences of people who claim to have died two or three times and have come back. Uh, I'm going to bring up what the Word of God said Amen. about the eternal state. That's the only thing I completely trust. I'm not trying to say that. Your friend is a liar who says that he's had this happen to him. I'm just telling you that the only thing I believe fully is this book. Amen. And this book tells us some things about the eternal state. Yeah. The title of the message is simply this. The sweetness of heaven and the sadness of hell. Yeah. The sweetness of heaven and the sadness of hell. There are only two places for the soul after death according to what I do believe is infallible, the Word of God. Those two places are heaven and hell. I mentioned limbo and purgatory in just a few moments ago. Those are pagan myths. They do not exist. If you die, you're not going to get to go to a transitional place and hope that you can work your way to a better place. If you die... My prayers won't help you a bit after you die. If you die where the tree falleth, that's where it'll be. And uh, and if you die, you're either going to die saved or you're going to die lost. The Bible refers to the windows of heaven being opened physically in the Old Testament for the flooding waters of Noah's day. They're spoken of spiritually. For the sending forth of God's showers of blessings yeah. upon His people. You and I can get a glimpse into a house. Now, don't get caught doing this. <laughs> but you can get a glimpse into a house by looking into the window. <laughs> Brother Bert took me by Bill's house. And later on, I thought about coming and casing the place and looking and <laughs> seeing if I could see Bill in there. I don't recommend you do that, but, but you've done it. Matter of fact, I've, I've, sometimes I've been to buy some big houses. You know how, if you tell, here's how some, you can tell if somebody's got money. If from the road, you can see into the living room and dining room, yeah. see all the way through, and you can see the pool in the back. Yeah. <laughs> so much that it makes you want to just take a run right through their glass and go jump in the pool fully dressed, then they've got some money. You can get a glimpse into somebody's house if they've got windows open where you can see it. And I want you to look with me at heaven's sweetness by looking through, peeking through the windows to heaven, the windows of the Word of God. I want to say that I believe, I don't know everything about the details of heaven, but I'm going to give you some reasons why I believe heaven is sweet. Amen. I believe that heaven is a sweet, wonderful place. I believe that saved people don't go there because they've worked hard. I believe they go there because that Jesus Christ paid for their sins and they trusted His payment for their sins given to heaven. Their faith is in the blood of Jesus. But I do believe, as we often say at funerals, they are in a better place. I believe it's a far better place. I believe it's a wonderful place. How wonderful heaven must be. Amen. 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 How do you get to heaven? Nancy? By God's amazing grace. You can sing with me if you want to. How sweet a sound that saved a wretch like me. Could we sing that 
sometime? Yeah. So we have. Amen. Amen. One of the reasons why I believe heaven's a sweet place is because in heaven there is singing about Jesus Christ. Amen. What you just heard may not have sounded like uh, the moron tabernacle choir singing. It may not have sounded like uh, some <coughs> orchestra that you have listened to the music and thought, oh, that's harmonious. But that's heavenly music, what you just sang. In heaven, we're not going to sing about how good we are. In heaven, we'll be singing about Jesus. Amen. And I know this. I'm going to give you something from the Word of God. And I'm not going to get you to turn to all these scriptures. And for those of you watching the, watching the clock, I want you to know, I didn't get started till a quarter till. Yeah. <laughs> so I ain't really got started preaching a quarter to one, okay? Uh, but in Revelation 5, 9, the Bible says of, of John having a vision into heaven, he said what he saw and he said, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, Amen. out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our kings, of our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Amen. Amen. Now, if you look at some of the things that made up that song just in those two verses, I believe in heaven we're going to sing about the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I believe we won't sing about how good we are. I think there was one song I saw in a hymn book one time that said, if anybody makes it, Lord, surely I will. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever sung, seen that song before. If working and praying have any reward and all this kind of stuff, anybody, we don't sing like that in heaven. We won't sing about how good we are, that we may be able to make it because we were good. Yeah. We'll sing about how good God is, how Amen. good Jesus is. Amen. It says, the, the beginning of the song was, Thou art worthy. I still love Thank you, choir, for coming up there and joining us real quick. Do you know those folks all across the world that enjoy this choir singing? Yeah. Because they have longed to hear somebody sing something that, that's what their grandma used to sing at church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> somebody asked me the other day, uh, do you, what kind of, said, you said that everything y'all sings out of the songbook. I said, yes, sir, that's right. And said, what kind of songbook do you have? I said, we got a good old songbook. Yeah. Got two yeah. songbooks. One that we use in, in congregation, one we often use in our special music. And, uh, and I said, here's good old solid hymn. Yeah. And he said, you don't sing any Gaither music? <laughs> I said, no, we don't sing any Gaither yeah, music right. here. I'm not speaking for every person in their home. I'm saying in the church here, we don't sing Gaither music. Yeah. And... Uh, he said, you don't even sing because he lives? <laughs> and, I, and I wanted to say, yes, I do sing because he lives. I just don't sing that song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What I did say is, we do sing he lives. Yeah. He lives. Amen. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. That's right. I tell you a song I like about the worthiness of God. Holy, holy, holy. Amen. Lord. God Almighty. Amen. All thy saints shall praise thy name. Yes, that's the kind of song I like. And you know what? I believe that's heavenly music. Amen. We'll be singing about the righteousness of the Lord. We'll, singing, we'll be singing about redemption. They sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us unto God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Yep. So, if you want to sing some heavenly music, let's go back to singing. There is power, power, wonder-working power. In the blood of the Lamb have you been free from the burden of sin. There's power in the blood, power in the blood. Are you watched? Are you watched? In the blood. One that I like is, is saved by the blood of the crucified one. Songs are even sung about the reign of Christ that's going to take place in the future. Uh, in what we call the Millennial Kingdom. And uh, probably the best known song that is sung around Christmas time that goes about that theme is the uh, chorus to Handel's Messiah. Yeah. So you, and he shall reign. Come on, that's what you do in the shower on Christmas time, isn't it? 
and your wife is trying to get you out of the shower saying, forever, forever. <laughs> Singing. I think heaven is going, I think heaven is a sweet place. And I believe that we're not off key when we're up there. And so it'll be beautiful. Secondly, I believe that heaven is sweet because up there, I believe there are shouts of joy. Isn't it a blessing to get around somebody that's happy? I mean, I've been around some people that uh, by the time we were done talking, I was ready to go to the mortuary and go ahead and reserve my spot. That's right. <laughs> what a blessing it is to, to be around somebody. And I mean, I've, I've told you that we've had some people that, that I've known that, that they were stuck on themselves, and I'd ask them, how are you doing? And it's all oh, great. Uh, if I got any better, there'd be two of me. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking so good each day, I think about buying a new mirror. Yeah. You know, I, I know that there's some people that are stuck on themselves. But isn't it a blessing to be around somebody that when you ask them how they're doing, it's a great. Yeah. Amen. You know what? It's possible for you to be doing great and still have a headache. That's right. yeah. It's possible for you to still be great physically, spiritually, and still have some kind of infirmity. That's right. Amen. Hey. You folks look so good. Yeah. And you actually act like you're having a good time in church. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I hope they're not in, offended in heaven because we're smile, smiling in church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> laughing in church. <laughs> you know. I mean, we're not, we're not Joel Osteen's bunch, but, but we're still having a good time Amen. in church. Wouldn't it be a blessing to know that up in heaven that your loved ones are having a good time? Amen. 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 I'd like to think that that when I, when I really get wound up and say the truth, I'd like to think there's some other, somebody up in heaven that God's allowing to look down here. Yeah. And I'd like to think that maybe Mama's up there saying, that's my boy preaching. Amen. Or maybe, maybe John the Baptist is up there and he's saying, let her rip. Yeah. <laughs> but they shout for joy up there. Also in Revelation chapter 5, continuing on where I was reading about them singing, the Bible says, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne, and the beasts, and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands, Amen. saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb Amen. that was slain to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. Amen. The shout without reserve up there. That's right. 10,000 times 10,000 is 100 million. Mm. And thousands of thousands. And nobody rebukes them up there. Amen. That's right. And I believe you ought to get a rebuke if you're just yakking out there in church yeah. you know, while the preacher's talking or announcements being given. You ought to shut your mouth in church unless you're saying amen. amen. Or unless somebody's asked to give a testimony amen. or something. But uh, I think it's wonderful when God's people say amen. And when God's people show that they're happy in Jesus and enjoying church. And if something is said that you believe, for instance, if I say salvation is by grace through faith, Amen. and you get stirred up and you say, Amen, preacher. Amen. That's right. Amen. Thank God we don't have an usher that's going to come over to you. Yeah. And say, son, we don't do that here. <laughs> <laughs> just hold up just a little bit. In our church, if you just raise your hand just a little bit, they'll know you're in agreement. <laughs> yeah. On heaven, they just shout Amen. Amen. with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb! Amen. One of these days, some of you are going to get so excited. I heard that. You're going to be as excited as you'll be when you're watching your football team. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. amen. You, some of you get, some of you get uh, sitting by somebody, get stirred up, and they say, Amen, preacher! And you get to thinking, he sure is emotion. <laughs> I had a preacher do that to me one time in, in, a, in a meeting in North Carolina. And we, we were, the guy was preaching on the grace of God. Harold Seidler preaching mm. on the grace of God. Amen. And uh, one of his men was there, and he was like 90 years old. And that guy who'd heard, he was hearing his preacher, he was there listening to his preacher preach as a guest preacher in his meeting. And he left his pew. And he got out in his pew. And started walking toward his preacher, waving his handkerchief. Amen. 
90 years old. You can do anything when you're 90 years old. You can get away with it. He started waving his handkerchief, and Brother Seidler looked at him, and he said, he's harmless. He said, y'all don't worry about him. Just give him a little time. He'll go sit down. <laughs> he got up there, and he, Brother Ronnie said to his preacher, he said, preacher, I heard you preach that message 40 years ago. And he said, it worked back then, and it's still working now. Amen. <laughs> That guy's got to be dead with the Lord now because that was a long time ago. Amen. And I believe he's up in heaven. Amen. Maybe the Lord let him hear, knowing I was going to use that as an illustration. Maybe the Lord let him hear that. Yeah. Maybe he's in heaven today with a little hanky. <laughs> Amen. Go, Brother O'Neill! Do it! <laughs> Shouting and happy shouts of joy. Which brings me to my third thought about the sweetness of heaven. I think that heaven is a sweet place because the saints are happy. Amen. Saints of God are happy. And sometimes I get on to you, but I do know that anybody who goes through life goes through pain. That's right. And anybody who goes through life goes through heartache, disappointment. There are things that are going to break your heart sometimes. But it is a blessing. It is a real blessing to being around God's people Amen. who have the joy of the Lord inside. Amen. Amen. Because if you've got the joy of the Lord inside, it can help you. Amen. When you've got the heartache of divorce, Amen. or you've got the heartache of, of physical health problems. I called on somebody <coughs> yesterday that had promised to be here. Neighbors of mine. They promised to be here. And, and she told me that they might stop by for maybe a minute or two. And she indicated that her husband wasn't doing well. She sent me a note over the internet last night and said, we're not going to be able to come. She says, uh, they've taken my husband to a hospice hospital because of his pain. Try to help him with his pain. I understand that people are going to hurt. You're going to have deaths in your family. You're going to have debts come up on you, you know, that you weren't expecting. And I understand that, but folks, you can still rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because the Lord is a good source for you to get happy. Amen. That's right. All you got, I, fellow that, that seems happy in the Lord all the time, somebody asked him, how do you stay happy? He said, well, I, I, I found this place in Psalms where it says shout for joy. And he said, so I made up my mind every morning I was going to get up and practice that verse. Amen. And so he gets up out of the bed and goes into the bathroom and he says, Joy! Amen. I got a daughter named Joy. <laughs> joy! Hear Joy! Amen. You say that's silly. Well, he put a smile on his face. That's right. Beats getting up grumpy. Uh -huh. yeah. Beats staying grumpy yep. as to be able to get up in the morning. Right. The saints are happy. The Bible says in Psalm 1611, Thou wilt show me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. Folks, focus on the right thing down here right. and it'll help you. Yeah. I thank God for God sending me little those things Amen. all the time. Amen. Through phone calls and stuff. It helped keep me going. Amen. Just glory, you helped keep me going. But Amen. this week, send me a Send me a little note. And Amen. She actually, now that's the only person that enjoyed Wednesday night sermon. <laughs> but she sent me a note saying how much she enjoyed Wednesday Amen. night sermon. And, and I, got a, I got a call uh, yesterday from a fellow who's from Pennsylvania. He, he reminds me so much of myself, except that I never was allowed to be the long-haired hippie because my daddy wouldn't put up with it. But I, I grew up with the Beatles and, hmm. and all the dope heads. You know, yeah. that, that was my influence. This guy's a long-haired, hippie-type guy. He's 51 years old now. But God's touching his heart Amen. through our stuff from this church yep. that is available on the Internet. Yep. Plus our uh, Monday through Friday radio program that we record on Facebook Live. He watches it every time. And those things keep me going. Amen. But I'm telling you if, you, if you have a hard time finding something to, to bring you joy in this life, I want you to know it is going to be better. Amen. On the other side. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that thy, in thy presence is fullness of joy. And then Philippians 1.21, 
says, for me to live is Christ. That's right. And to die is gain. Amen. Saints are happy because Christ is present. Saints are happy because the crowd is pure. They're, re they're reunited with saved family members. Amen. And they're happy in heaven because the conditions are perfect. Health, environment. I'm reading a book on heaven right now at the house, and it's telling some of the pagans' ideas about heaven. I guess it's probably pagan, but if, if, uh, if I were to envision heaven right now, I envision a place where there's just <coughs> table after table of banana pudding. <laughs> Chicken and dumplings. <laughs> Peanut M&M's. Amen. Let me give you another thought about heaven. Another reason why I believe heaven's sweet because there our Savior is seated That's right. triumphantly. Amen. The Bible says of Jesus in Hebrews 10, 12 that this man after he'd offered one sacrifice for sins forever sat down on the right hand of God. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. The Bible teaches that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, was buried, He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. He spent about 40 days with the, with the disciples, then He ascended up to heaven, and He sat down at the right hand of God, and that's where He is right now. Amen. Now, Him being seated in heaven was in contrast. The Bible calls Jesus our great high priest, and He is seated. In the Old Testament, and most of your Bible is Old Testament, but in the Old Testament... The Jewish priests never sat down as they ministered. That's because the work was never done. But when Jesus accomplished the one sacrifice for sins forever, on the cross of Calvary, He said, It is finished! Amen. No more sacrifices. You trust Jesus Christ in His blood, you're saved one time and you're saved forever. Amen. And part of that is signified by the fact that our great high priest sat down. That's right. The work is done. It shows the conquering of Satan that he sat down. It shows the completion of salvation that he sat down. And it shows the creation of security for the believer. I mean, he is there offering, having, the Bible says, for by one offering he had perfected forever them that are sanctified. The Bible says that he is our intercessor and he makes intercession for us on a daily basis. The fact that he's seated also hints to the fact that there's coming a time where he's going to stand up. Yeah. Mm, Amen. Right. There's coming a time where he's going to stand up. That's, that's sweet about heaven. Thinking about Jesus being seated there. One of these days he's going to stand up. Amen. He's going to stand up and he's going to come back. Right. Well, let me just throw some things at you from the Bible about the sadness of heaven. Yeah. Sweetness of heaven. Here's why. The Bible says... In 2 Samuel 22, 6, the sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. Do you know there is a hell? Yeah. Right. Yes, Virginia, there is a hell. Yeah. Lost sinners deny that there is a hell. Yeah. The Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in hell. Yeah. Liberals don't believe in hell. But logic and sense demand that there is a hell. That's right. Amen. I was talking to one of my friends out on the tennis court one time and and, and I heard him mention the fact that, you know, he didn't think about, didn't like to think about the fact that there might be some kind of eternal torment or punishment for people, you know, after death. Yeah. But you know what? When you see how depraved man is, right. and some of the things that man does, yeah. and seems to get away with yeah. in this life, it makes you realize that logic demands right. that there needs to be right. a hell. Loyal soul winners demonstrate the escape from hell. The Lord's scriptures declare clearly there's a hell. There are 54 verses in the Word of God that use the word hell. That doesn't include the number of times that the Bible talks about eternal fire, everlasting fire, eternal torment. I say hell is a sure truth and hell is a sad truth. I'm talking about now the sadness of hell. Hell is sad, number one, because of the population who will be there. That's right. The Bible says in Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars yeah. oh shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, yeah. which is the second 
dead. Sister Emma, Sister Emma, get a seat or go somewhere. Don't be bothered to you. Shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Who's hell going to be populated by? Hell's going to be populated by the ungodly. If you don't trust Jesus Christ as Savior, you're going to be right there amongst some of the most ungodly people who've ever lived. Amen. You talk about a bad neighborhood. That's a bad neighborhood. If you can think of some of the most awful people throughout history, that's where you're going. You're going to that neighborhood. Who's going to be there? The unbelieving. Doesn't matter if you may not feel like you're as bad as Jeffrey Dahmer or as Adolf Hitler or whoever you might think of that did despicable things. If you haven't trusted Christ as your Savior, if you have rejected the Son of God because you think that you can't live it or you think you'd rather live like you are living, you don't have to change your life to get saved, but you do have to trust Jesus Christ as your Savior. And if you're thinking that you don't want to change your life because you think maybe I might have to change my life, I want you to know you're going to go to hell as an unbeliever. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. John 3, 18 says. Who's going? The ungodly, the unbelieving, and the unwilling. The Bible says, whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Amen. You know, that's sad that that's the kind of people that will be in hell. Maybe some people who've never committed murder, maybe never committed adultery, maybe never touched a drop of drink, and yet because they wouldn't trust Christ as Savior, they're unbelievers and go to hell. Number two is a sad place because of the pain that they will experience. Now, folks, I'm not trying to make you mad. I'm trying to preach the truth to you. Amen. You're not listening to a preacher that is happy about anybody going to hell. Amen. I know the Baptist preacher on the Internet who prayed for people to die and go to hell. I would pray for anybody to die and go to hell. That's right. But the Bible does say in Luke 16, it tells about the beggar that went to paradise into the bosom of Abraham. Everything is wonderful. And the rich man lost his, left his riches and died and was buried and in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torments. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take a lot of time. I'm going to close in just a moment but I'm just saying that hell is a place of pain. The rich man said, I am tormented in this flame. And he said, would you send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue? Oh my, what, what thirst there must be in hell. What torment there must be in hell. Then hell's sad because of the permanence of the torment. You see, you don't just spend so many years in hell and then get out. You don't have this. It's everlasting. The sentence is everlasting. The sentence is forever. 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 Matthew 25, 46. Sweet Jesus. People say, oh, brother, you don't have the sweet spirit of Christ. Jesus, who's the sweetest name I know. Jesus said in Matthew 25, 46, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Everlasting means there'll be no relief. There'll be no rest. There'll be no rescue. The rescue has already been offered. If you spurn it until it's too late, you're going down. Which brings me to my final point. That is, hell is sad because of the prevention of you going. That's possible, but has been rejected yeah. by some of you in this room. You see, Christ died for you. Mm -hmm. Amen. He paid the price for you. He didn't uh, pay the price for me any more than he paid the price for you. And if there's any room, person in this room who is saved, and if you're lost, the Lord sent Jesus to die and shed his blood for that person just like he did for you. The difference is, one received it and one didn't. That's right. Jesus said to the Sadducees and Pharisees, or excuse me, John the Baptist said uh, to Pharisees and Sadducees who came and he was preaching and baptizing, he said to them, these were the religious crowd of the day. These were religious people. These were the religious Jews. And he said to them, O generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? I'll answer that by saying to you, the Scriptures 
warn you. Amen. That's right. right. I've read the scriptures too. Ye generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Jesus said, Ye serpents, how shall ye escape the damnation of hell? Yeah. The Savior warned you, the scriptures warned you, soul winners warned you, and today this preacher has warned you. Are you prepared? That's right. Heaven is going to one day be replaced by the new Jerusalem, described as descending from God out of heaven, Revelation 21, 2. Hell, for lost people, is one, going to one day be replaced by the lake of fire. Yeah. And hell is going to be cast into it, according to Revelation 20, verses 11 to 15. But heaven will always be sweet. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hell will always be sad. Right. Right. Where are you headed? I have warned you to flee for the wrath to come. Will you do it? Amen. You can do it by trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior. Not by determining, oh, I'm going to start going to church now. Right. Or I'm going to start reading my Bible now. That won't get you to heaven. That's right. You'll get to heaven by resolving, I will trust Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. Amen. And as you do that from the heart, God will give you eternal life. You'll be heaven back. Yep. I, I'm so glad for a no-so salvation. Amen. If you don't have it, you can get it right now. Let's stand together, heads bowed. This is...